bridge pattern. I would say bridge pattern is the most complex pattern uh, among all structural patterns. Okay, so be prepared. So what is it? Uh, bridge pattern decouple an abstraction from its implementation so that they, the two can vary independently. Okay. Uh, as you are going to see later on, you can think of abstraction is the owner of the implementers. Uh, by the way, both abstraction and implementers are Java interfaces. Okay? So don't be fooled by the term implementation uh, because both abstraction and implementation, they are in fact the uh, Java interfaces. Okay? Uh, uh, we, we are going to take a look at the examples and you'll have a much better understanding. So when to use it? When there is a need to avoid permanent binding between an abstraction implementation and uh, maybe because abstraction and implementers are uh, owned by different organizations. Okay, I'm sure still you're confused. Okay, so let me give you an example. Let's say different OS vendors, uh, Windows, Mac OS and Linux vendors uh, you can, you know, you can basically think of them as abstractions. They want to use a different GUI libraries, uh, meaning they want to have a different uh, implementation, GUI library one, GUI library two, and uh, you know, the OS vendors obviously should be able to use different GUI libraries, but they do want to evolve their platforms. Uh, independently from GUI libraries because you know obviously OS vendors are uh, different vendors from GUI library vendors right okay so that's one example in fact that is what you're going to do as a homework uh, another example is different MVC frameworks uh, maybe Spring MVC or Play whatever you know those MVC frameworks want to use various persistent schemes so various persistent schemes are implementers so this could be JPA it could be Hibernate it could be OpenJPA so you can think of vendors of frameworks uh, different vendors from the ones that make persistent implementations okay uh, so you can think of OS vendors want to use GUI, GUI libraries. You want, to, and also in this case, MVC frameworks want to use different persistency framework, uh, persistency implementations. Okay. So in this case, you can think of OS vendors as abstraction, GUI libraries as implementers, and same thing for MVC frameworks are abstractions, and various persistent schemes are implementers. Okay. All right, I am going to actually use uh, the lab example first and I'll get back this participants, okay? Because, uh, you know, just talking about the participants sounds a bit too confusing. So let's take a look at an example. Okay, so example we are going to see is uh, bridge persistence. Okay, so let's actually persistent schemes. So in this case, you know, framework one and framework two, uh, they are the uh, the framework abstraction. So framework is an abstraction. So here framework is an abstraction. So in this case, each framework might want to use a different set of persistent schemes. Uh, so in this case, framework is represented by framework abstraction. Okay. And the persistence implementations are abstracted as a I persistence implementer. So as I said before, you know, the abstraction and the implementer, both of them are in fact captured as an interface. Okay, well in this case an abstract class, implementer uh, are captured as an interface. Okay. So this framework abstraction uh, wants to use this implementer. You can think of this as the abstraction, right? Uh, that abstraction object, uh, the concrete object will be injected as a type of this interface type, right? And in this case, what we want to do is we want these are the methods. Framework persist, framework find by ID, framework delete by ID. So these are the methods from this framework. Okay. Now the concrete implementation of this will be provided by concrete implementation of this framework. Okay, so it's going to be framework one and framework two. So in this case, framework one basically provide the actual implementation of those framework 
by uh, framework delete by framework find by framework persist now internally is actually using this implementer so you know the actual implementer uh, could be injected you can think of you know you can see the uh, uh, the implementer will be injected to this concrete class as an abstraction. So this could be in fact JPA and this could be in fact Hibernate. It could be Open JPA, whatever. The concrete implementation will be captured as this abstraction, and it's using that abstraction object to perform uh, the uh, delete object, and yeah, so it's actually using the method of the actual implementer. So if you take a look at the persistence implementer, this is interface, save object and delete object and get object. And all persistence implementations should implement this guy. So, you know, let, let's say JPA persistence. So JPA persistence in, the implemented those three methods. Okay, so, you know, basically the actual implementation is gonna be just string out uh, in this case, okay. So, you know, this is the uh, delete object, and this is the uh, get object, and this is the uh, save object, okay? Uh, and uh, so this is JPA persistence implementer implementing this interface type. Same thing for Hibernate. So this is Hibernate. Oops, sorry. Uh, Hibernate is persistence. So it provides implementation of those three methods of this persistence implementer, right? Okay. But a framework, uh, framework implementations are just using that abstracted type, in this case, I persistent type, and uh, you know, basically calling those uh, implementation delete object and get object and uh, save object. So depending on whether it is in fact you know, injected with the Hibernate implementation or JP implementation, uh, Hibernate Pacific or JP Pacific, uh, the uh, implementation will be invoked here right okay um, so uh, so you know just and then let's actually take a look at the client code in client code uh, we are going to select you know either JPA or hibernate uh, again it could be coming from the command line argument or we could be some kind of uh, business logic uh, the uh, um, and uh, then we are going to perform persistence operations so you know we are going to actually perform the uh, um, the, uh, yeah, so I should say this one should be a uh, framework uh, abstraction. Uh, so, you know, the framework abstraction, uh, I'm calling framework specific find by ID uh, and uh, delete by ID and uh, persist. Okay. Uh, so let's see how it works out. It's basically performing, uh, the first one is using Hibernate and then it's using JPA and things like that. Okay. Uh, so this is an example where uh, the framework and uh, the uh, persistence uh, framework uses the persistence and uh, you know those frameworks and the persistence uh, the uh, vendors they are different vendors and they want to evolve independently what that means is uh, this framework abstraction you know I could actually have another method like a framework uh, the uh, you know if I want to evolve this abstraction I could actually add another method public void void and framework method two and it should not have any impact whatsoever to the code I mean it should not have any impact to I would say the persistent implementers because they could evolve independently right uh, same thing with the uh, persistence you know persistent implementer here I could actually add uh, another method like a public uh, the uh, void whatever method okay so I can add this new method and obviously the implementer should actually implement it right uh, the uh, uh, so I should actually implement this guy uh, the uh, so I'm gonna just add on the, uh, this method is in the edit and JPA same thing. So I could actually evolve the implementer independently from this abstraction. 
And I was able to actually evolve this abstraction independently of these implementers. That's basically what the bridge pattern is all about. You know, you have in fact the uh, abstraction which uses the implementer, and the abstraction and implementer can actually evolve independently. And I just demonstrated that uh, I just, you know, add this new functionality to the uh, abstraction. It doesn't affect the implementers. Okay, uh, same deal. You know, I change the implementer. Uh, and it doesn't actually affect the uh, framework. Okay, so they could actually evolve independently, and I could actually add another implementer uh, in this case. So I could, you know, if I want to support uh, the uh, the uh, Open JPA persistence. So you know, I'm going to actually create another Open JPA persistence. So let's actually try to create the. Uh, oh, I just save, I copy, and I'm going to just copy and then create. Uh, so I'm going to say uh, open JPA open JPA uh, implementer so open J implementer uh, here uh, yeah, I am instead instead of open J open JPA I'm going to just you know use open JPA uh, I'm going to just replace all like this okay uh, oh it says open JPA open JPA that's not but Okay, so I have a new implementation of, uh, you know, the persistence implementer, and uh, I was able to, and I, you know, I was able to use this guy without affecting the framework. Okay, and uh, in the client code, if I want to use, if I want to use uh, this new OpenJPA framework, it's just a matter of, you know, using this guy. I'm gonna just change this guy instead of hibernate. I, I would say OpenJPA again, based on some business logic. Uh, I could actually choose particular the uh, persistent implementation, and the rest of the uh, business logic doesn't need to be changed, right? Okay, uh, and uh, so let's actually run this guy. Okay, so now you know the uh, uh, OpenJPA is being used. Okay, so in this example, I demonstrated that the uh, uh, the you know abstraction uh, which uses implementer. Uh, they could actually evolve independently, and that is in fact the essence of the bridge pattern. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna actually give you guys five minutes to play around with the persistence example, and I'm gonna actually explain another another one, which is a remote control example. Okay, so I'll give you five minutes and uh, give me some questions. Okay, see whether it makes sense. Again, the key point is the abstraction, which uses the implementer. They could evolve independently. Uh, you want to make sure the framework abstraction, uh, in this case, framework abstraction is, uh, is actually referencing uh, the uh, persistence implementer type here. Uh, you actually setting protected. The reason is because in the concrete implementation of this, uh, the framework in this case is using that implementer. Okay. Uh, so it should be the child class should be able to access an uh, implementer uh, field of the parent. So in, if you actually have this one as private, uh, if you change it private, for example, let me just change this one to private and save the change, and then you will have a problem in this uh, subclasses. It cannot access the implementer because it's a private member of the parent. Okay, so. Uh, uh, you want to actually make sure that it's actually set either protected was a default. Okay, so I'm gonna change it back to protected. All right. Okay. Moving forward. Any question on this example? Okay. So let's move on to the next example. In fact, I have a three examples in this case. Remote control example. So this is an example where you have. Uh, device vendors and device vendors make a TV and radio and things like that. Okay, and then we have a remote control vendors. Uh, remote control vendors uh, they make actually remote controls. Uh, you know, and they are different vendors from the TVs. 
TV and the, you know, the uh, radio device vendor. So they want to evolve independently, obviously because they are different companies, okay? So we want to use a bridge pattern and uh, uh, to, to let these two different vendors evolve independently. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, abstraction. So in this case, remote control abstraction. So remote control abstraction will have a reference to device implementer. So this device implementer is, in this case, uh, this is the abstract class, okay? So uh, the uh, remote control abstraction, uh, I mean the remote control abstraction has a reference to device implementer, okay? Now what we want to do is we want remote control, uh, yeah, so by the way, remote control has its own on and off switches. Okay, so that's basically example of uh, remote control have to have its own functionality, which could be actually evolved differently from uh, device vendors. So these are the methods that are relevant only to remote control. So, you know, we want to have a way of, oh, I'm sorry, this is the device one. Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm actually kind of mixing up. I was talking about this guy. <laughs> sorry about that. So I have these two methods, remote control on and off. And these two functions are used. These two methods are used to turn it on and turn it off the remote control. It has nothing to do with the devices that it's actually trying to control. This is just turning on and turning off the remote control itself. Okay, so remote control vendors have to have a way of turning on and turning off their remote devices. Okay, and now it wants to also to be able to control the remote devices. Okay, so we have device on and device off. So these two abstract methods are for controlling the actual remote devices, such as the radio and TV. And these two abstract methods are controlling remote control itself. Okay, so obviously they are, you know, two different things. I mean, inside the implementation of this guy, it will actually have a reference to the actual device, right? Device implementer. These two guys, you know, they will actually have their own implementation, which has nothing to do with remote devices, okay? <coughs> so let's take a look at uh, implementation of this remote control abstraction and see how they implement it with these four methods, okay? So let's take a look at the remote control uh, the uh, refine abstraction. So here, these are controlling target devices, target remote devices. So it has to use device implementer object that was actually injected. So device implementer is an abstract class, right? That has been injected. The concrete uh, object will be you know, injected, but the type of it will be in abstraction, device implementer. So it's using device implementer to uh, you know, to turn on, turn off remote device, remote target device, okay? Uh, these two methods are controlling remote control itself. So in this case, we are, you are, you are going to just say turn on remote control and turn on, turn on remote control one, okay? So this is actually remote control one. And that is another remote control, uh, so remote control two, okay? Remote control two, again, will have implementation of uh, device on, device off, okay? So it's using this device implementer, the, uh, the uh, reference to perform the actual operation to the target device, okay? But these two methods are the, uh, you know, remote control related operations. So you're basically turning on the remote control two, turning off the remote control two, okay? Okay, and now let's actually take a look take a look at the actual device. Uh, so device implementer, so this is in this case, instead of uh, interface, you know, we basically have it as uh, the abstract class, okay? Uh, because we want to have a common, you know, the functionality for all devices. Uh, if we do not, if you do not have a common functionality, then we can just make this one as interface as well. But it happened to be that every device will have this on and off string method. Okay, so we actually capture as a concrete method, and then we have the uh, these two uh, methods, uh, which will be implemented by particular device like a TV, radio, uh, the uh, you know stereo, or whatever. Uh, you know, that actually perform that device specific, device specific uh, the operation, okay? And these two methods are, these are, you know, device related. These are device related uh, methods and these are not gonna be called any remote control, okay? So this is an example where 
uh, device vendors can evolve their functionality without being tied up with the uh, remote control. Uh, these are the functions that will be provided to remote control vendors, but these are the functionality that the uh, device vendors can actually add or change in whatever they want. So basically, uh, you know, the, uh, these functionality could be evolved, uh, could be evolving without uh, being tied up with uh, remote control. Okay, but these two methods will be uh, invoked by remote control. So if you take a look at the, uh, let's say, TV concrete implementer, so TV concrete implementer, in this case, let's take a look at TV concrete impl implementer. So these are the methods that will be, you know, invoked by the remote control, but these two methods are uh, device specific uh, functionality that has nothing to do with, uh, that, that are not going to be controlled by the remote control. Uh, same thing with the uh, radio. Okay, all right. So we have these two methods will be invoked by uh, the uh, remote control. Uh, these methods are device uh, only related, uh, device only related in uh, the methods. Okay. So again, this is an example where uh, I can actually, you know, remote control, remote control vendors might in fact uh, add another uh, method like, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, yes, yeah, so we'll actually have maybe public abstract uh, it could be actually you know concrete method public void uh, whatever method okay and uh, you know I can add this new functionality to uh, remote control abstraction without actually forcing any change on the devices themselves okay so I can change so this is evolution of the uh, uh, this remote control uh, without actually tying up with, uh, without actually forcing any change on the devices. Same thing with the devices. I could actually change this device implementer if I want to add another functionality here. Private, uh, let's say, uh, I can actually have a public void, uh, the uh, XYZ method. Okay. And uh, I can actually add functionality to device implementer, and uh, and uh, you know, and, and I can also change, you know, the uh, change the actual implementation code uh, as well. Uh, I can actually evolve the uh, device uh, functionality without being without forcing change in remote control. Okay, so this is another example where the abstraction in this case is the remote control and devices, those are implementers, they could actually evolve independently because they are not really tied up or coupled to each other. Okay? Okay, let me just pause and uh, any questions? Okay, I have another example. Uh, in this case, is actually a manufacturing plant. Uh, manufacturing plant that uh, they want to build uh, vehicles. Okay? And uh, so, uh, you know, you can think of uh, these vehicles uh, being created by different vendor while, uh, you know, the uh, manufacturing uh, plant, they are just doing assembling, okay? And then they do not create a bike and car themselves, but instead they kind of, you can think of them as assemble. So in this case, uh, the plant is, a manufacturing plant is an abstraction. So. Uh, they are going to have a reference to vehicle implementer. So vehicles will be created by vehicle uh, vehicle vendors. Okay, and these guys are just, you know, the uh, the uh, performing some uh, assembly. I would say. Okay, so these are the abstraction methods like add wheels, add frame, and build vehicles. Okay, and uh, so these are. Uh, these are the abstract methods, and different vehicles need to be implemented differently. Okay, and then add workers. Add worker workers has nothing to do with the vehicle. So this is the method that will evolve independently from vehicle uh, classes. Okay, so here we probably have Chicago has a way of adding workers, and New York plants have their own way, uh, their own way of adding workers. But this functionality has nothing to do with the vehicles. Okay, so this is a plant abstraction which has a reference to vehicle implementer abstraction. So let's take a look at the uh, 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 the uh, Chicago plant. Uh, so this is a concrete implementation of plant abstraction okay so these are the methods that will be uh, implemented 
using vehicle implementer object. So you know the uh, it will calling add wheels, add frame, and build vehicle. This one needs to be done per vehicle basis. So you know the add fields and add frame and build vehicle, uh, the uh, different different implementation has to be used depending on whether you are in fact building a bike or building a car. Okay. So this one uh, you know is actually calling the methods of the actual uh, vehicle concrete object, right? Uh, this one is add workers. This is actually you know the uh, the functionality per plant. Okay, so add workers to Chicago plant. Okay, uh, same thing with the New York. So this is the uh, New York plant abstraction. Uh, so again, these are the methods uh, calling the vehicle implementers uh, implementation of add wheels, add frame, and build vehicles. And this is the uh, plant specific uh, implementation of ad workers. Now let's take a look at the uh, vehicle implementer abstraction. So this vehicle implement abstraction, uh, the, uh, so this is the concrete method that all vehicles should have. Uh, check wheels, it will just return number of wheels. And then uh, depending on whether you are building a bike or a car, uh, you know, they have to be implemented differently. Add wheels, add frame, and build a vehicle. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, concrete implementation of this vehicle implementer, and one of them is uh, bike, bike concrete implementer. So it will have implementation of these three uh, methods. Okay, and uh, car implementer same deal. Car implementer will have a different implementation of add wheels. You know, it has to add four wheels instead of two, right? Uh, and the add frame and uh, here basically calling add wheels add wheels and add frame and then build a car so you know this just represent different implementation of this abstraction method depending on whether you're building a car or whether you're building a bike and things like that okay so if you take a look at the client code client code here build a car in Chicago plant and build a car build a bike in Chicago plant and you can build a car in New York plant, okay? Uh, and you know, here basically you are injecting uh, different uh, the, uh, uh, the the different vehicle implementation. Uh, again, this could be actually selected based on business logic, okay? Uh, or it could be uh, you know it could be captured as the command line argument for simple uh, application like ours, okay? Uh, and then it calls a build vehicle and add work. So here, build vehicle. This is the uh, you know. Uh, the uh, it will use the uh, car concrete implementers build vehicle inside inside uh, of the build vehicle method. Same thing with this one. Ad workers is actually plant specific, so this one has nothing to do with vehicle itself, right? Okay. So here again, we can actually extend the functionality. We can certainly add tricycle concrete implementer class, right? Without forcing any change in the abstraction. You know, we don't have to change any uh, New York plant or the uh, Chicago plant abstraction or you know plant abstraction. We don't have to make any changes on those code. Uh, you know, for adding a tricycle, uh, the implementer here. Okay, or we could actually add Chicago, New York, and Boston. We could actually add Boston uh, plant uh, without actually forcing any change to the car or bike implementers. Okay, so they could actually, uh, it could be, the, the functionality could be extended, okay, without forcing any change on the existing code. Now, without using bridge pattern, uh, you know, what you have to do is, this is before case, either you have to, let's say, uh, let's see, uh, plant. Uh, where is the new okay so either you have to use a conditional logic like this okay add wheels and then you have to check whether the vehicle type is car or bike and things like that and if you need to support like a, like a triangle uh, then you have to change this code okay so uh, you know the uh, this is uh, conditional logic that is being used okay uh, which is not desirable uh, and if you're not using conditional you might in fact use inheritance inheritance it will proliferate all kinds of the uh, it will it will actually cause two problems proliferation of uh, all subclasses so we have a Chicago bike plant Chicago car plant and then we have a New York bike plant and New York car plant so it will proliferate lots of subclasses and the second problem is it a lot of functionality could be duplicated 
okay so if you're not using bridge pattern either you have to use a conditional logic or you have to actually use the inheritance and uh, neither will actually provide the uh, optimal solution okay so by using bridge pattern you have a very elegant solution where you have abstraction which evolve independently from implementer okay all right so this is the uh, bridge uh, i mean this is the uh, uh, vehicle plant example let's see the homework okay so homework uh, this is a GUI so uh, basically what I want you to do is uh, this is the uh, to do example so I want you you know we want to create OS platform vendors to be able to use a different set of GUI libraries okay so in this case OS platforms are abstractions which uses the GUI libraries and we want these GUI libraries GUI library 1, GUI library 2, GUI library 3 and things like that so platform vendors are different vendors from GUI library vendors so they want to evolve independently and of course you know platform wants to use the GUI library right uh, so the, these are the steps you are going to do so create OS platform abstraction class okay and uh, which contains GUI implementer uh, type object a field and it has to be protected type it also contains abstract methods get mini si minimum screen size and maximum screen size and uh, these methods are platform specific it has nothing to do with GUI okay and then we are going to yeah and then we're going to actually have implementation of this uh, the concrete subclass of this abstraction class so we'll have a windows refine abstraction and the mac os refine abstraction which extends os platform abstraction uh, abstraction abstraction class and then we're going to have a gui implementer abstract class which has its own abstract method draw circle and draw square and then you need to create implementer of uh, two implementers gui library one gui library two okay uh, so in this case, uh, the uh, when we run the the solution, yeah. So it will GUI library one draws a circle, GUI library one draws a circle, and these are basically screen size. Okay. So if you take a look at the uh, uh, client code. Uh, we have Windows uh, abstraction which is inject with GUI library 1 and uh, then we are drawing circle and drawing square uh, so it's actually using this GUI library to draw circle and draw square okay uh, and then this, we have a get minimum size get minimum screen size get maximum screen size that has nothing to do with uh, this GUI library these are the methods from this own abstraction and same deal here so here we are using a different implementer okay uh, let's see uh, that is uh, the homework and uh, I thought I have actually one more thing to talk about okay so I'm gonna give you guys uh, plenty of time to do uh, this homework uh, I'll give you uh, 25 minutes we'll be back 235 or 240 okay so let's 